system software. We've talked about system software before, now we're going to talk about it in a little bit more detail. <clears throat> the first type of system software is your operating systems. Our operating system handles the, I guess, the daily activities of our personal computer. Um, our operating system consists of and provides functions for us. The very first is to manage our resources. Resources such as memory. All right, uh, whenever our computer does anything, we use an input device, correct? And we were to say one plus one, it goes into memory. All right, it manages, our operating system manages the amount of space that memory uses to allow us to input and then process and then come back and whichever application is doing this for us the amount of memory that's allowed it for that particular task and then of course it helps us um, interact with our hardware our keyboard or input device our output device it provides for us a user interface uh, you can see the user interface here is a graphical user interface right. voice recognition from our text uh, is another new interface that we can use it helps us run our applications okay this could be a calculator application that we're using earlier to add one plus one and if you wanted to we can add and work on other applications. That's what multitasking allows us to do, or what is called multitasking. The current application that we're working with is what's known as in the foreground one. The application that we're not working with is in the background. There are many features in an operating system the features, some of which we've already talked about, such as our icons, our pointers, our windows, and our menus from our earlier lesson. They're available via the desktop. This is our desktop here. Other features, such as doing a code boot, which is the computer is completely turned off, or doing a warm boot where the computer is already on, and we just simply reboot it rather being completely off and then turning it on. There are certain categories of operating systems. The first is embedded or what's known as a real-time operating systems. Now, these are our innate, so-called innate objects where we can have system software installed. Uh, like a like an iWatch okay uh, next we have a standalone category a standalone operating system like our desktop or laptops and then finally we have what are known as network operating systems which are used to control and coordinate computers that are networked and linked together okay so here you can have a network operating system while these were all standalone operating systems are being used and your network operating system helps control how these folks interact with one another so here's our embedded standalone and network remember our better are not just watches these are other handheld devices such as our mobiles, tablets, etc. Next we have what are known as mobile operating systems. All right. These are linked with our embedded operating systems here. 
these specific operating systems and get into greater detail, uh, rather than being categorized as just embedded, they also are known as having the Android operating system, the Apple operating system, and the Windows 10 mobile operating system. Next, we have what are known as desktop operating systems. Desktop operating systems, the one that we're most familiar with would be a Windows operating system, such as Windows 10. Okay, this is a picture of Windows 10 right here. There's also what's known as Mac OS. All right, uh, with the Mac OS, you now have what Sierra, Mac OS Sierra, and Mac OS High Sierra, right, which increase in the amount of, uh, let's say, functionality uh, that you can use with that particular operating system. And this is by Microsoft, and this is by Apple. And then you also have Unix and Linux. Linux, or Unix, sorry, is an operating system that is widely used by servers on the web. Okay, also mainframe computers and very powerful personal computers. Linux was actually developed based upon Unix. And there are, of course, free Linux, or at least when it was developed, it was free and open source. Uh, when Linux Travods uh, developed it when he was back, a, when he was a graduate student back in the day. Uh, open source meaning that it's up there in the clouds and people can download it and improve it okay and add those improvements and upload them as well so that all folks can share there are also lots of distributions or distros of Linux derivatives of Linux uh, Chrome OS is a distro or distribution of Linux is based upon Linux in other words um, uh, that are out there uh, that are perhaps specific and it's in its source and use uh, for instance Chrome OS is basically a very light operating system uh, in which it expects its end user basically to do everything up in the clouds Okay, so it doesn't need to have all the different things that perhaps we know Windows and even Mac OS has for us locally. Sometimes when you have a box, basically a system unit, uh, you want to run not just Windows, but maybe you want to run Mac OS too on there, maybe even your version of Linux. And you can't do that all on the same equipment unless you get a little inventive and you do what's known as VM or virtu through virtualization and through virtualization what happens is if you had a Windows computer you can virtually run like Mac OS or Linux within it okay your Windows would be the host while your Mac OS or Linux would be the guest operating, system, guest operating system, your host operating system and your guest operating system. And that'll allow you to have both of them running in the same box. Uh, there are conveniences and strategies in allowing for that to happen. Number one, you don't need to have two boxes. You can have everything run on just one box. Okay, it lets, also lets you test 
drive certain things, test drive applications. Uh, it also allows you to have access to applications um, that perhaps can only run on Windows or perhaps can only run on Mac OS or Linux. And it gives you access to those applications to use. Uh, that's what makes virtualization very popular. And last about system software, we have utilities. Utilities such as diagnostic utilities that recognize and correct problems uh, that your operating system experience uh, before it become very serious. We've talked about this before as well in our previous lectures. Antivirus programs are considered utilities. Backup programs are considered utilities. You also have file compression utilities. Uh, for instance, you may want to send a large file and you want to compress it into something smaller before you email it or upload it on to the internet. And you'll use a file compression program to do this, making it easier for you since the file size will be smaller. You also have virtual assistants uh, with virtual assistants like Cortana with Windows or Siri with Apple. Uh, these particular assistants accept our, uh, our verbal text and uh, do commands based upon uh, those particular verbal text that we give it across multiple applications allowing us uh, to schedule our times uh, on, a, on a calendar uh, to interact not just with a time calendar uh, but with other applications on our operating system and even applications up there in the clouds. You also have utility suites. Remember we talked about suites with uh, productivity suites uh, these suites will give us a kind of a leverage effect on what's possible and what we can use them for. Uh, examples of suites would be uh, a Bit Defender or Norton Utility Suites, um, you know, such as antivirus programs or other programs that perhaps have these particular types of utilities all together for us. Um, in Windows, some of the things that were uh, discussed in our text, which was pretty neat, interesting, was a file history utility that makes a copy of all the files that are in our libraries, contacts, and our favorites on our desktop for backup. There's also disk cleanup. Okay, that'll clean up non-essential files for us. And then also a storage utility that allows us basically to delete old um, programs and the related files uh, off of our system that we know that we really don't need anymore. Okay, it'll identify which, uh, you know, which of the, which of those programs are first. And then of course from there you can decide whether or not to delete all of them or delete some of them. So today we talked about system software and remember system software is basically operating system software and our utilities. Okay, it should be noted that our book also discusses that within system software uh, there's also a category on device drivers and language translators. Uh, device drivers just basically allow us to use our peripherals. They tell the operating system how to go about using them. And language translators, well, uh, they convert programming instructions written by programmers into a language that the computer understands and processes. All right, so 
within our system software category with the two big ones here uh, we talked about the our operating systems and we broke out their functions in terms of what they do for us their features here are their features within this picture okay if you look at it our icons pointers windows menus and how they're categorized from there we expanded on our embedded category about our mobile operating systems and talked about how we have our Android types our Apple types and our Windows types and then our desktop operating systems which we're used to using okay uh, in addition to Unix and Linux for some of us who may not be familiar with uh, Linux at least uh, which you may be some of us and how we can have more than one operating system by using a process known as virtualization that gives us access to applications that perhaps only run on a particular platform and then we found we wrapped it up with utilities and how they can help us with our everyday file management activities making sure that um, they're backed up that they're compressed to save space so that we can move them easier that they don't have viruses our virtual assistants okay and how all these utilities can come in suites and then we talked about several of the window utilities and that's it on system software